Okay, uh, so now you know the entire algorithm. Now let's talk about the specifics, the details. So um, one interesting thing about decision trees is um, it's a recursive algorithm, and what it will do is it will keep splitting the data until it ends up with pure sets. And what this means, yeah, question. Yes, yes, okay. So the question there was, what if you have two exactly identical days, right? Uh, if you have two exactly identical days, so they have the same weather and the same wind and the same humidity and all the parameters were the same, but on one day John played and on another, John, uh, on another day John didn't play, there is no way to separate them, right? So this is called noise in labels, right? It either means your representation is inadequate you should be looking at a different set of attributes, or it means maybe there's a mistake in labels, or maybe this is just the way it is, right? Maybe there's some uncertainty, and that kind of uncertainty cannot be taken care of. No classifier is able to deal with that. Right? It's, it's, it's impossible. You know, if you have classifier as a function, if you feed in two identical inputs, you always get an identical output. It's not, it's not stochastic, it's deterministic. So it, 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 it's true for every, for every classifier. Um, uh, but that's a degenerate example. So assuming that that doesn't happen, what the decision tree will do is it will keep splitting the data until every subset is perfect. And what that means is the decision tree will always classify your training examples perfectly, always. Right? So remember in the, last, uh, in the last lecture, we talked about naive Bayes and the mistake that it made. Right? So we had a training example, and uh, the naive Bayes after training classified that in the exact opposite class. Uh, from what its label was, right? Everybody remember that? So it happens with naive Bayes. It happens with lots of other classifiers. It will never happen with decision trees because decision trees will keep splitting until it gets it perfect. So until the accuracy is 100%. Um, now, in many cases, this means splitting until you have singleton subsets. So it will keep splitting until the leaves have one example each. And, uh, and that's not a very good thing. It's not a very good thing because uh, <clears throat> you are not guaranteed that the testing data, so this will only work if anything that you see in the future is something that you've already seen in the past. Right? Your tree will not be able to classify any data item that it hasn't seen before. Because it, it basically, it, it separated them all into singletons and it's looking up the labels for each. Uh, singleton. So that's not a very good idea. And this is a symptom of a much more general problem that we'll talk about in the subsequent lecture. It's called overfitting. Right? So as the decision tree keeps splitting the data, the tree gets bigger and bigger. As it gets bigger, it becomes more and more accurate on the training data, but at some point it will become less accurate on the data that you haven't seen before, on the data that you're not using to train it, on the future data. So here's a typical example. This is accuracy, how accurate your tree is, what percentage of things it's classifying correctly. This is the depth of the, uh, sorry, the number of nodes in the tree. Um, and what you see is this is the performance on the training data. The more you split, the better your accuracy becomes. And this will just keep rising until it hits one. Uh, what, but by that point, the size of the tree is gonna be the same as the size of the data set that you have fed into it. Uh, if you try to measure performance on testing data, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna keep rising at first, but then it's actually gonna start dropping. So uh, this is called overfitting. Your algorithm is becoming too specific to the data that you used to train it. And it cannot generalize very well to the examples that you haven't given it. Uh, before. So that's a problem. How do you avoid overfitting? Well, uh, there's, there's basically two ways. Uh, they both try to do the same thing. They try to not grow a tree that is too large, not grow a tree with singleton subsets at the leaves. So uh, two ways to do that. One, um, in addition to the splitting, you do significance tests. So every time you're, uh, you're splitting, you're, you're trying to do, uh, you, you run a little significance test and say, okay, I was able to split the data. Now, could that be due to chance or not? 
basically, um, so uh, if, if you had a set of two uh, examples and you split it into two, so now you have two singletons, what is the chance that you're guaranteed that the subsets will be pure, right? Because there is only one example. So you wouldn't be surprised at all. So by chance, it would happen 100% of the time. Uh, but if you had a subset of, say, uh, 1,000, right, and you split it into two sets and you end up with a pure set when one is 500 and another is 500, uh, that is, there's a very low chance of that happening accidentally, randomly. So a significance can test can give you a number, uh, not only how good the split is, but how, uh, what, what the chance would be to, for it to happen just randomly. And then you can put a threshold on that and just stop splitting once the numbers are above uh, a certain threshold. So that's one way. Um, another way, which is, which is covered in the textbook, is the, uh, is the pruning. So here what you do is you grow the tree right, uh, to the full depth, and then you start pruning it, uh, removing the branches that don't seem to do well on the future data. So how do you do it? You take the set of the, uh, you, set, you, you take your set of training examples, you randomly split it into a training set and a validation set, you grow the tree on the training portion, <coughs> and then you use the validation set to prune. So you go over each node of the tree, pretend that you remove the node, and then see how well this pruned tree would do on your validation set. Um, and then in the end, once you've computed this number, you remove the node that gives you the greatest improvement. So you basically, you're trimming the nodes, the overfitting nodes, the nodes that are too specific to your training data and that seem to hurt performance on the validation uh, set. And, um, and uh, so this is one iteration of the algorithm. You remove one node, and then you re keep repeating it un uh, until further proving, uh, pruning is harmful. So basically, uh, you build the whole tree, you start here, and you start chopping nodes until you get to this point. Right. And, and then you, that, is, that is your final tree. <coughs> okay, uh, so uh, we've covered... Uh, We've covered decision trees, but let's actually, before we talk about this stuff, if you're trying to follow the book, by the way, these are, uh, these are the uh, sections that it's doing. Um, 